Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you what I've been working on in my own project using the new Unity multiplayer networking solution, and I'll also be showing you some of the behind the scenes, and of course, if you see anything that you want to be made into a tutorial, be sure to let me know down below in the comments and I'll see how many of those I can get around to. That's it for now, so let's get started. Before we have a look behind the scenes, let's see what the game actually does so far. So I've got four instances here, and I'm going to host in the top left, and we see we have slots for four different players, and we can ready up, and when all players are readied up, we can start the game. But if I join on a second player, then only half the people are readied up, so I can't start the game. And obviously when I ready up here, you see it's syncing in real time, same with the names, and I can go ahead and join on all four clients, and then ready up on all of the clients. And once we're all ready, we can then start the game. Once we load in, you can see I have a character here that can run in all four directions and even diagonally. And if I look up, I've used the Unity animation rigging package to make the character's head and spine move up and down. And I can run over to another character over here so we can see them on the other screen. And when I look up and down, we can see that is synced. Same with the running animations in all the different directions. And I can then go across to a different character and run over and join them as well. So all of the syncing is done for movement, animation, uh, even the animation rigging, it's all synced together. Now I have only been working on this in my spare time for the past couple of weeks, so I haven't got too much done. Uh, there is also the ability to shoot off projectiles, um, and then obviously everyone else sees them and they get destroyed, but I need to do a bit more work on this, that's my next job, is to try and actually implement some kind of attacks and then attacking animations. But I think so far there's actually quite a lot to uh, cover, that people want to see, like I've heard quite a few people wanting to see a tutorial on making a lobby and then also just the whole connection and uh, disconnecting process. So if I was to uh, get out of this window right now and then close it, we'll see on all the other screens that player disappears. There they are, they're gone now. So now there are only the three of us and it all works just fine. And I can also talk about how the movement is synced with the animation and the animation rigging package. And then obviously this is just number one in a series of videos where I'll be showing you the progress on my project. So over time, as I add more features, I can cover more of them in these tutorials. I think that's enough of this. So now let's have a look behind the scenes. So inside of Unity, the first thing I'll show you are the packages I'm using. So I'm currently using the latest version of ML API, which is also the first version we've got access to, which is 0.1.0. And as for Unity packages, um, there's some that I've imported myself, like localization, the input system, Cinemachine, animation rigging, but quite a lot of these are just dependencies of other add-ons that obviously get added themselves. So you can have a look here if you want to know what I'm using and also the versions. Same with the version of Unity is 2021.1. So for my scenes, I have a startup scene, so the first scene that gets loaded, and all it does is load the next scene with a script that just grabs the current scene and goes to the next one. And the reason I made this is because originally I didn't have this and I had this issue where the input system just wasn't getting initialized correctly and none of my input was working in the game. But then I looked on the forums and found some people suggesting doing this and it works. So literally this scene exists just to make sure the input system gets initialized in time. And then the next scene it goes to is a net startup, which is similar. It has the next scene loader, but it also has the network manager and the game net portal. So as you know, with ML API, the network manager is the core of everything. It's where you host or join as a client from. It's got the transport and all the settings. And then the game net portal, I got this from the Unity boss room sample they made themselves. And it's just a good way of splitting up the server logic and client logic for connecting to the server. So if we have a quick look in here, we have the game net portal, which is kind of the, the root of the free. And it's just got a ton of events for when various things happen to do with people connecting, disconnecting, changing scene, all that kind of stuff. And we can look down here and see it's all just to do with messages and events, really. Um, if we go and look in the server net portal, it's obviously server related logic for this. And it stores the clients that are connected, which scenes they're in, uh, their data, so basically their name. And it has various events here for doing server side things. And then we can also start a game. Uh, we have logic for what happens when people connect or disconnect. And for the client, it's kind of similar. If we have a look in here, just a few more events for when things happen, like connection timeout. So if you fail to connect to a server or when you uh, do finish connecting, or if you disconnect and why, and all these various events here. 
So these three scripts are really just a ton of events for handling connecting and disconnecting. And then once we are done with this scene, it will load the next one, which is the main menu. So go to the main menu. And here you can simply start as a host, start as a client, enter the name. And this testing toggle will simply change which scene we go to. So we can go to the testing map, which requires a minimum of one player, which saves me from having to build and run a separate client. I could right now hit play, uh, give it a second. And then if I hit host with testing on, I can just ready up and play on my own and test everything myself. So this makes testing a lot faster for when I'm just testing, like let's say the character controller, I don't need to have other, uh, other players connected to test that. I think now would be a good time to give a quick shout out to the Kiwi Coder. He has some tutorials on animation rigging and animating and rigging in Blender, as well as, like I said, using the Unity animation rigging package. So this is more FPS focused, but it still uh, applies to what I want to try and do. So these have been really helpful for getting set up with a simple animated character. So go check his stuff out if that's something you're interested in doing. I'll also put a link down below to the Unity multiplayer documentation and sample, so you can get access to that if you want. And also I've been using this software called Codex for project management. I know there's tons of project management tools out there, but I've seen this quite recently and it has a bit more of a game dev uh, focused twist on this. So I think it actually works very well. Quite simple, you just make cards, you assign people to the cards, you can set the cards for particular milestones, how much effort or priority they have. You know, it's pretty simple, but it's also quite powerful and I think it's just quite nice to use. Um, I'm using it solo right now, but if I ever added more people to my team, of course, you can add people and then assign them to the various cards, categorize them, uh, put them in milestones, like I said, and just see everything you've done here. Let's head back into Unity and look a bit more behind the scenes. So once you've started hosting or connected as a client, you'd go to the lobby scene. And when you're in the lobby, uh, you see here we have the UI. And then in the UI, we have a canvas uh, with this background with these four cards and each card has the lobby player card script which is simply just for the ui so it has the name the image of the selected character when i eventually add that and then whether the player is ready or not and all that happens is whenever the player does something such as joining or changing whether they're ready or not this method will be called passing in their state and the state has an id a name and a ball for whether they're ready so in ML API, there are built-in types that you can sync over the network, but you can also create your own. So here we go, I've created my own struct with the interface I network serializable, and all you need to do is just implement this method here, network serialize, and you just do this for each of the various um, data fields that you have inside of here. And by making this custom type, you can then go to the lobby UI and I can have a network list of type, lobby player state. And if we look down here, you can subscribe to the list changing. And then the method for when the list changes is down at the bottom. And we just simply loop over uh, all of the players and we either update their display with the new data or we disable their display. And that will only happen if they leave basically. And then the host has the start game button and we set whether it's interactable or not based on whether everyone is ready. So the first thing it does is make sure that we have enough players in the game. So right now I'm allowing it to start with one player, but obviously it might be a two player minimum eventually. And then once we have enough players in the lobby, we want to make sure that everyone who is in the lobby is ready or not. And if at least one person is not ready, it's false. But if everyone is ready, then it's true. And then we have the ability to start the game. So down here, the start game button calls a server RPC and all it does over here is say if the person who sent the request, sent the RPC, is not the um, local client for the server, aka the host, then we return. Because right now only the host can start the game. But eventually we'll just assign the first person who, uh, the first client who joins, they'll be like the lobby leader or the party owner, and they'll be the one who's allowed to start. But for now it's just the host. And then, yeah, on the server side, make sure everyone's ready. And if everyone is ready, start the game. And then we go back into Unity, we jump over to Scenes, and we go look in the test map. And we'll see over here, I have this thing called the round system. And this is what kind of kicks everything off. And at the moment, all it does is just spawns in players, but it will also handle the countdown and storing all the players who are still alive and, you know, ending the round when 
uh, there's one player left standing and all that kind of stuff. So all it does is it says uh, when this object starts existing, if it's on the server side, it goes through all the clients that are connected and puts them in a list. And then whenever a uh, client tells the server through an RPC that they are ready, then it basically says uh, if they are not in the list, then return. And that stops them, you know, requesting it twice and then getting spawned in twice. So it's just to stop that case. Um, so if they are still yet to connect, then we can spawn them in, which just spawns in uh, the player prefab and then um, spawns it in for this client ID, which just gives them ownership. And then we also remove them from the list and we check if the um, how many players are left. And if it's zero, then we just log everyone is ready. But this is where the game would actually uh, start because everyone is loaded in. So yeah, that's pretty much the basics of everything I've got. You can have a quick look at the movement script, and we see up here, um, it's currently all just in one script, though I do want to spread it out into some kind of state machine eventually, so that I can actually separate the logic out for all the different kind of movement states, whether it's jumping or sliding or whatever. But for now, for prototyping, it's just in one script, and this handles updating the animator, um, and then if we look down here in the update method, the owner calculates the movement and does all of that stuff, and then it's synced using a network transform component. Eventually, I do want to make this movement be server authoritative and have client-side prediction, and MLAPI, they are actually working on making that themselves out of the box, but right now, if you wanted to do this, you'd have to make it all yourself, and I'd rather just focus on making gameplay right now and worry about that later. So technically, yes, people can cheat and hack their movement relatively easily if they knew what they were doing, uh, but at the moment, I don't really care since I'm just prototyping. So I think we'll leave it there for my first video in the Unity Multiplayer Game Dev Journey series. I'll be doing more of these whenever I've got enough to show. And I encourage you highly in each of these videos to just let me know in the comments which parts of the gameplay you think are the most interesting to make tutorials out of. And I'll be sure to get around to making those. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, then please leave a like and subscribe. It would help a lot. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Francisco Lira, Sahila, Benjamin Hilda, Kat from Garfield, David McDermott, Evan Maxi, Joris Letter, Casey, Katinka Mom, Lawrence Simpson, Malvin, Mark, Mike Miller, Rack, Ulfgrim, Andrew Williams, Chris Diplock, Fury, and Dario. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, a link to Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.